the last one. Good evening and uh, welcome to our to monthly meeting of the Hampton Beach Area Commission. Uh, let me uh, start by introducing uh, members and uh, special members. Uh, we have Jason uh, Bassad from the um, uh, Hampton Town Planning. We have Fran McMahon representing the Rockingham Planning Commission. We have Mike Hausman representing DREAD. We have Dean Merrill, Commissioner at Lodge. We have Chuck Rage representing the Hampton Beach Village District. We have Ann Marshan, our secretary, John Nyan representing the town of Hampton, Rick Griffin representing the town of Hampton, Bill Watson representing DOT, Bob Preston representing the Hampton, um, Greater Hampton Chamber of Commerce, and Bob Ladd representing the Hampton Beach Village District. Do we have any public comment tonight? Oh, but before we do that, Mr. Preston, would you uh, allow us to do the Pledge of Allegiance? Absolutely. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, uh, I'll make this quick. Uh, less than five. It is amazing what you can accomplish if you do not care who gets the credit. That's Harry Truman. On a community announcement, April Fools, tomorrow, parking starts at Hampton Beach. Parking <laughs> meters, so let the buyer beware. I've heard there might be a delay. I don't know if you know anything about it, Mike. I do, yeah. I'll, okay. Yeah. I just wanted to speak briefly on some transportation issues, you know, the fact that we weren't ready for the Tiger Grant, or I guess that's what I've heard. Sometimes it seems like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. You know, with the VHB and the bridge going into four lanes, into a roundabout or a light, we should err on the side of caution with respect to spending huge sums of money when science says to take a good look at the climate changes. I'd like to know, but I don't expect an answer, if the BOS or the town manager even consulted with the HBAC with regards to Article 38, E Street. If they didn't, that's not right. If anyone were to check your minutes, they would find my input all over them. And most were received in a positive light, but tonight I'm ready to shut that light off and sunset myself for a time. From trying to get the intersection of E Street, Brown, and Ashworth to have reconstructed to alleviate traffic congestion and other small amenities like a bus stop for four years is extremely frustrating to get nowhere. Actually, at this point, in my opinion, we might be going backward. From something as simple as a bus stop so people can get out of the rain instead of trying to cram under a bank ATM to go nowhere. While maybe upwards of 100,000 was wasted to study two-way traffic on Ashworth Ave that floods. I'm not sure if anyone noticed, but when I have a difference of opinion, I will also offer something to consider as a possible solution. Maybe we could find a bank that would like to put an ATM with a bus stop on the corner of Brown and Ashworth in the town parking lot in the corner. Maybe people could use it you know, without parking in a travel lane, is, which would exist today across the street. Every day that bank machine is used, there are people parked in the travel lane. It's not right. It, something could be done. Maybe we should pull it on our side of the street, and then maybe the town of Hampton could make some money. In October 2012, I suggested the East Street ent entrance. Mr. Chairman, I believe it was you that asked me, what if the casino didn't want it? I said I would respect property rights and work on the intersection without that component. But then to find out three and a quarter years later that we did own it, only to find out the Board of Selectmen and the Town Manager recommended giving it away, all the while the HBAC is paying VHB to study transportation at the beach. Prior to even finding out that East Street existed, I told Gordon Levy of VHB this intersection was an integral part of the heart of the beach. Maybe it's time for this committee to take a good look at itself and decide which direction you are going. A lot of small things become big things. Let's prioritize and not reach for every pie in the sky. Article 37, which was to accept A through Q Street. 415 people voted 
not to accept the streets. Article 38, we got 1,174 votes not to discontinue. So I dare say that, you know, we swung 750 votes. Was it enough? No, we would have needed to swing another, we would have had to swing another 400 votes to swing it, 440 votes, something like that. But I'd like to say thank you for the people that did support me. I did ask the week after the um, election on Monday night selectmen's meeting for the Board of Selectmen to request Mr. Lupoli or his representatives to meet with you. I don't know where that stands at this point. I'd also like to say I don't know if there is an appeal process for Article 38, whether it could or should be done. It's a process that's bigger than me. I tried, people were confused, and in my opinion, the local press, there was a strong censorship. But there had to be zero printed press in the local newspaper from the deliberative session on January 30th to the March 8th election day. That's five weeks. It's amazing considering the value of town land. Maybe it's time to show some intestinal fortitude and actively promote taxpayers' assets and tax dollars, and also error on the side of caution with respect to the scientific projections. Ultimately, a barrier beach and its inhabitants have one boss. She's called Mother Nature. I, I want to say thank you. I want to pass around some pictures that, and you can, Mr. Chairman, you can hang on to them. That's 2012 and 2013 of you know, a dozen kids underneath a bank machine and we can't even get a bus stop. Maybe we could ask a bank if they're interested and put one on our side of the street on that corner. They might want to do it. The town might be able to make a few bucks and we'll have stop having you know people parked in the travel lane on the other side. And I thank you very much for your time. And, uh, thank you. Any comments for Mr. Preston? Hearing none, thank you, Charlie. Appreciate it. You got it. Okay. Review and approval of the minutes of the March 1st, which was really the February meeting. You all have copies. Page one. Page two. Page three. Page four. Page five. Page six. Page seven. And page eight. Hearing no changes or edits, I will entertain a motion to accept the minutes of March 1st. Motion made by Mr. McMahon, second by Mr. Greffin. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Ex ex uh, Mr. Watson is abstaining. Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just have two things on my uh, my report tonight, and that is first the Tiger Grant application. As you know, we voted last month, uh, beginning of this month, I should say, for us to uh, at least start exploring the possibilities of submitting in a Tiger Grant uh, for this year. This was part of a, uh, a federal program under the uh, Federal Highways uh, Administration. Um, there was about five hundred million dollars uh, available. Uh, throughout the country, uh, no application requirements, just a, a clear-cut application um, that uh, we as a eligible applicant could apply for. Um, I also um, looked into finding out more information and actually participated in a two-hour webinar where they went through all of the details of the Tiger Grant um, and uh, the pros and the cons um, what would be some of the key areas that they would be looking for as part of their criteria. Um, we were eligible uh, to apply for over a million dollars. Uh, there was still a question mark on whether or not we were considered rural or urban because of our population. Um, we, uh, <coughs> the, the, any type of application that would be submitted had to be um, for construction projects only. It didn't give any money uh, available for any type of engineering uh, 
concepts or any engineering planning, but it was it had to uh, be uh, what, what they call shovel ready. And that shovel ready had to be ready by September 30th, 2019. Um, one of the uh, one of the things that I looked at, as we have all looked at, uh, was the Ocean Boulevard uh, re reconstruction project. And yes, in fact, in my personal opinion, um, this type of project is, fits right into the eligible uh, project funding for Tiger. But then I, um, I, I wanted to get the input from one, William Rose, who was our project manager of the transportation grant, and also uh, Bill Watson, who I actually asked to wear two hats, one of which was the Beach Commission and one of which was DOT. And um, I believe I sent all of you kind of an agenda or what I would call my talking topic, uh, talking points to that meeting that we had on the 23rd of March. Um, it quickly became evident in talking with both Bill and William that we needed to move away from what I would consider the emotional aspect of, yes, we really need to get Ocean Boulevard done, to the realistic point of view of are we ready yet and would we be ready by September 30th, 2019. Bill was kind enough to <coughs> explain all of the different things that would be required for us to have in place um, if we were to be lucky enough to get a grant. Um, there were a number of different items, um, all kinds of different uh, uh, design, engineering design concepts, et cetera, et cetera. We also talked last, uh, last meeting with regard to possibly having Senator Stiles help us if we could move some of the stuff forward in the, uh, the Hampshire DOT 10-year uh, plan. So that there was that kind of that glim of hope, if you will, that this could be something that we could actually shoot for. But I think when it came down to, um, and William Rose brought it up uh, as well as Bill, and that is if we were to put in an application, which would be due by the end of this month or the end of uh, April, we would have to give a dollar amount. And that dollar amount basically would say, this is what we know, not what we think, but what we know it will cost for us to do Ocean Boulevard. And I think that kind of changed my mind, my personal opinion, that we think we know a number, number has been thrown out anywhere from six million dollars uh, that we saw in the transportation grant in certain aspects of doing street by street uh, all the way up to 13 million dollars that we had put in three years ago but we didn't really have a really defined number um, and that I think was the, the decision that made me feel that we are not ready yet. Um, that we're probably six months to a year getting from VHB through our transportation grant, a real detailed engineering design which will give us an actual cost of what we wanna do. The other component which we didn't know uh, which direction we we're heading is what alternatives we were gonna recommend to Ocean Boulevard. Put, put Ashworth uh, Avenue aside for a minute, but just the, uh, the two components of Ocean Boulevard, uh, south of the Ashworth Hotel and north of Ashworth Hotel. And um, we don't know which ones this commission will be recommending over the next six months, which will have a direct cost association with that. So although 
Um, and, and I think Bill sensed uh, the tone of my voice at the end of that one hour discussion um, of disappointment uh, because I was anxious to get this thing moving. I think the word risk became evident. Uh, we as a commission made up of volunteers, uh, if we were to say that we want $13 million to do Ocean Boulevard, and we're putting our name on, on that application, and let's just say that we were fortunate enough to get that $13 million, only to find out between now and September 30th of 2019 that it was going to cost $18 million, then we're at risk as an organization to say, all right, now we have to scramble to find another $5 million because we can't go back to Tiger and say we can't do this project <coughs> because we don't have enough money. And that would really jeopardize our future in any type of Tiger grants or Federal Highway grants going that if we had to back out of something because we didn't have all of the information. So my recommendation, and I'm going to ask Bill to comment also, but it'll be my recommendation that although emotionally I would love to, to move forward, um, I think we once again have to postpone our efforts until we get more definite information from our transportation grant, which would give us uh, hard numbers of what it would cost to do Ocean Boulevard. So, Bill. <laughs> 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 we haven't talked since this conference call. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. It does that. <laughs> John, I think John is right. You know, what, what <coughs> take any emotional hat off and blame me for being the guy from Concord or the bureaucrat or whatever you want to call it. Um, there, There is a reality in the fact that we're already involved in a process that needs to evolve and get to a point of conclusion. We're, we're, we've already achieved an award of funding from Federal Highway Headquarters to work on a master plan update that's going to talk about some transportation alternatives that are acceptable to hopefully all of the organizations that we represent um, and to the greater beach community. And based on those outcomes, then that gives us a pretty good picture of uh, the type of transportation improvements that need to be done down here that can be well coordinated with other activities, whether it's the bridge work or other intersection improvements that might be local or uh, whether that focus should be down near the south end of the beach or up near Boris Head and going to the north, how much of it should involve dread parking. We had a great meeting um, a few weeks ago with dread about different alternatives for for parking and what they might be interested in, and, and, and those things need to flesh them out, so themselves out still. And we're talking about another, you know, like John said, the end of this calendar year, thereabouts, um, before that work is done. Tiger is going to happen every year, the, these Tiger funds through, through USDOT. Uh, they are part of the transportation reauthorization bill that Federal Highway has authorized through 2020. And it's the first time in years we've had a five-year or long-term transportation bill. So we have some comfort and some confidence that we'll be um, back at the table about this time next year or the year after or the year after, as we feel it's appropriate, to talk about where we're at with the transportation plan update, what have we completed, and what are our priorities. We, you know, looking at, at as an agency, looking at different transportation projects that we're considering applying for uh, as part of this Tiger Round, every project that we considered already has a defined scope, not just the reconstruction of Ola Ocean Boulevard. The, the project we ultimately are looking at ourselves is, is one that we're um, working on with the state of Vermont that's the reconstruction of two bridges over I-89 and the uh, I-89 over the Connecticut River, very specific bridges, very specific design work that started two or three years ago. It's still going to take another couple of years to finish through the design process and the permitting process to, to get to a point of construction. We haven't even picked that concept that we like yet. 
if that takes the rest of this year, it's going to take two or three years. If you're talking anywhere between a six to $13 million project, it's going to take two plus years to get through the design. We have huge permitting issues, environmental issues to overcome with drainage and DES approvals and core issues and climate change issues. You know, the alarmists were out this week and we have to deal with, with um, uh, all of those folks and, and overcome that to, to actually get to a project that can be designed and put out to bid for construction by the fall of 2019. In addition to that, we have a lot of administrative stuff that we'd have to overcome, very similar to the transportation grant that's doing the master plan update now. We'd have to um, ensure that the funds got to the agency. You know, I would assume it would be DOT that the Beach Commission would be looking at to design this, but we have to have those conversations and we would have to have those agreements in place. That takes time. That conversation can be starting as soon as the application is made, but it still takes time to, to get through the, the, we have a new commissioner, you know, or fairly new commissioner still. We have to get her up to speed. We have to get it approved by governor and council. Uh, Senator Stiles has worked hard to try to make sure that there's engineering funds uh, to get the project designed. Right now, if you look at the 10-year plan, the engineering funds are out in 2021 and 22 in the draft 10-year plan, so it doesn't help us. Uh, to get a project designed unless she can achieve getting the, the funds moved up. We started that in the, the, in the legislative process. The House has passed a 10-year plan <coughs> on to the Senate that talks about moving funds up for any Tiger award for a project that's in the 10-year plan. So we might be eligible uh, to get through there. It has to go through the Senate. It's Senator Stiles that starts that conversation, and that conversation isn't starting in, in the Senate Transportation Committee until close to the end of April. So we have to get our we would have to get our application in before she starts that conversation through Senate Transportation, and, and it gets through Senate Finance into the floor for a final vote. Um, and it's just, I think it's premature. Um, pragmatically looking at what we have for the engineering design and the requirements and the permitting. If this were a one-time shot, maybe we'd be doing some more arm wrestling, John and I, on not emotions versus rational, or not that it's emotional versus pragmatic from an engineering perspective. Um, but this isn't the only shot. Uh, we do have this opportunity next year. I think with the, the schedule that we have with the grant update, with the master plan update, we'll be in a much better situation a year from now to have the same conversation. We'll have a lot of the 10-year plan and the funding pieces in place and approved, not <coughs> guessing that the legislature is going to allow us to move forward. And um, we can continue the conversations about the administrative stuff so that when, when we want to apply again and when, if the Beach Commission feels that it, next year is the right time to do it, we'll hit the ground running much faster. Uh, we'll still have the same time frame, the three years or so, to design it, but we'll be a year ahead of where we are right now um, with a much better chance of success. And, you know, the, 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 the fear factor for us is the risk. If, if we apply now and, and we fall on our face, everything that is spent has to go back to Federal Highway. So that's a risk for the department. Uh, and we run that risk with every project that we're involved with. If, if a project gets to a point and, and the only reason is finances, that we can't move a project along, the feds ask for their money back and they require it. Um, and, and if this were a, you know, there are communities that will ask for Tiger grants and if they're funded and those funds come through us and, and they fall flat on their face, Federal Highway comes after us first and we go after that community second. And I don't want to put this Beach Commission, our organizations, uh, or anyone that we're associated with at that risk simply because we're really eager and really emotional about moving this project forward now. So John heard that from me. He heard some of that from William. Um, I hope he heard encouragement that there's still good opportunity. We have a lot of good work. Uh, and ultimately, it's, it's the whole Beach Commission's um, a decision, but our, our recommendation from a, a with the DOT hat on is that now is not the right time to move forward with, with a Tiger application. Thank you, Bill. Any comments from anybody? Any any thoughts? 
Hearing none, um, we don't need to take a motion. It's just that we will uh, not move forward with the Tiger Grant this year and revisit it uh, come in uh, 2017. Okay, um, update on the transportation grant. I really have three things I want to talk about, uh, one of which I'm going to pass over to, uh, to Bill to talk in representing William. But the two things that I, I want to talk about is that uh, recently received an email from Jason from the planning uh, board asking us um, to get with them to discuss the uh, transportation grant. Um, and and <coughs> in a way of just talking in general terms of where we're at right now, what we're planning on doing, and also to look at kind of the approval process going forward. Um, so I would like um, to ask Jason to possibly in April to set up a meeting with the planning board. Fran, I would ask you to help uh, facilitate that um, and to have that kind of discussion. Um, as you know, we've had meetings with other town organizations, uh, public hearings, uh, but I think uh, we also owe it to the planning <coughs> board uh, to have a sit down discussion and, and, and talk about you know, what, what the plan is, uh, what has come so far, uh, get their input, and then also talk about steps uh, in the future. So Jason, if you would be able to, uh, to do that, uh, just shoot me an email of what, what uh, meeting you could put us on the agenda. Okay. And then I would that. notify the commissioners and anybody who would want to come could come. So that's number one. Number two, um, related to that, you all saw an email that I sent to Senator Stiles um, last meeting. Um, I had given her a heads up that there's going to be a time where if we end up making recommendations to the existing Hampton Beach Master Plan, um, that we're going to make sure that we know what the process will be to make those recommendations and how to incorporate those recommendations into the revised Hampton Beach Master Plan. Um, so I sent her an email. Uh, indicating a couple of things. One, uh, once again, that you know the uh, the master plan was developed back in 2001. Um, one of the recommendations of the uh, the authors um, indicated that they uh, were recommending that a Hampton Beach Area Commission to be established to uh, oversee uh, the recommendations and advise, consult both state and local governments on the master plan. Uh, that was in fact done in 2003. Um, but uh, and also under the powers of the Beach Commission, it represent it, it. It states that we can consult and advise both the state and town, but it also references that um, we have uh, the responsibility to do periodic reviews of the master plan. I consider what we're doing with the transportation grant just that a periodic review. That leads to the issue, however, of what happens now. And so what I have asked uh, Senator Stiles to do, because it's my understanding that the interpretation of an RSA must first go to the Attorney General um, and his, uh, his office to review our RSA and either to determine that there is some definition within the existing RSA that will clearly spell out the approval process. Um, or if there isn't, then similar to what we had to do back in 2009, when we did away with the commissioner from uh, energy and planning and incorporated a commissioner at large, and also we changed at the same time the uh, years uh, of service by commissioners, we would probably have to do the same thing in this, is to uh, ask for our existing RSA to be amended to include a section uh, incorporating a, an approval process, and whether or not that approval process would go to the planning board first, to the town, to the state, whatever. But um, I do not want to be in a situation where everybody on this commission has worked so hard um, and come this fall or when, whenever, that we're ready to make some recommendations and make some changes to the master plan that we don't know how do we incorporate that. 
So by addressing this issue now, I think we're, we'll be well ahead of the game with regard to the interpretation of the RSA. Um, so, Fran? Uh, I think in the original master plan, the planning board did an approval. Um, I've, I've heard some pushback. You know, if that if that is a, if there's an attempt to change that process, uh, so I think that might be one of the things we want to talk about when we sit down together. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason being that you know this plan is really ultimately part of the bigger town plan. Um, it, it, they really don't function separately uh, from a townwide perspective. Um, so I think you're going to hear, you know, folks on the planning board saying that they would still like an approval uh, process in there, um, and you should be aware of that. Yeah, and and and, and Fred, I speaking just for myself, I, I don't have a problem with that at all. Um, I, I think what we we're trying to get clarified was that when the planning board adopted the master plan, there was no beach commission. And so now that there is a beach, beach commission, what roles does both the beach commission and the planning board have? And if you were to read the RSA, it really isn't clear in terms of, uh, there, there's nothing in any of the sections of the RSA that references uh, what do you do if you want to make a change to the master plan? That's the bottom line. So. Yeah, and there are other sections in the RSAs that, that specifically talk about the planning board preparing a master plan. Mm -hmm. So uh, there, uh, there may be some some yeah. confusion, uh, you know, some, we may be stepping on each other's toes yeah. inadvertently, that, and we don't need to do that. I think we can work yeah. through that process. Yeah. So, okay. Any other comments from anybody? Hearing none, the third... Uh, Update on the transportation grant. I'm going to let Mr. Watson handle this, and that is that we uh, we were told by William that um, the uh, a new task order has been uh, established and approved uh, to extend the uh, up to uh, way past your location. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it it came up with the through the Beach Commission when William was here um, late fall. I think that um, we needed to consider looking further north than than the, the work the VHB had been doing and uh, so William sat with Rick and and John and and had some good conversations and he's worked with Gordon Leedy and the, the staff at VHB and last week we actually gave um, VHB the notice to go ahead and extend the study area up to Winnicunit so what that means is um, a lot of the existing condition information that we saw VHB present to us previously, the traffic counts, roadway inventory, um, bicycle pedestrian information, traffic volumes, uh, et cetera, uh, zoning, um, parking layouts and such would be identified and, and, and documented. Uh, looking at projections for traffic volumes, level of service at the different uh, intersections, how those intersections operate now and in the future, uh, and ultimately um, making some recommendations on corridor and roadway improvements, bicycle pedestrian accommodations, uh, cost estimates to go along with those, uh, very similar to what we've, we've seen in, in concept already for Ashworth and uh, I'll call the southern half of Ocean Boulevard now. Um, I don't know what the final cost was. I know that our estimate at the cost was about $28,000 for VHB to co complete that work, and their number was significantly under that, was, was William's comment. Okay. Uh, so, and that's, that's part of when we negotiate something with a consultant, we have to come up with our own independent estimate based on what the tasks are, have been defined as and, and our expectation of what, what it would take. Um, so I will get the exact number for everyone um, William's estimate was 28,000 and change. Um, VHB, as I said, came well into that, and um, therefore he gave them notice to proceed to, to begin that work uh, last week. Okay. Any questions? 
I just wanted to ask, um, does DOT have anything to do with whoever's marking all the streets now? There are people like coming and spray painting them. There's quite a few marks. On Ocean Boulevard, it's... Yeah. Uh, and on the sidewalks, it looks like they're marking the drainage pipes or the gas pipes, maybe. Is it dig safe? It, <clears throat> is it dig safe? I don't know. I, I don't know. I will, I will check in with the I have seen see DOT around. I saw them over at Little Jack's. DOT they, was they, all around the beach the other, uh, last yeah. few days. Yeah. I, I just was curious. There's quite a bit of, you know, the spray painting in, yep. in the drugs. Right. I will find out what's going on. It's bright yellow and whatever. And, it's and, and some of it's green. Oh, some green It's green and yellow. And so that would be <coughs> marking water and gas for yeah. something. Yeah. 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 yeah, so maybe that's what it is. I don't know is. what we've got. Somebody must I don't know. Be doing. Yep. Yeah. I don't I'll see Brian well, down there tomorrow. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> I'm sure it's good, whatever it is. Just don't take it off. Okay. Um... One of, one of the things that uh, you'll see at uh, our next meeting is uh, our first quarter of our in-kind services report that I'll ask all of you to review and, and hopefully approve. <coughs> and um, I'm also going to ask William um, to either be present at our next meeting or to provide us a report to kind of give us an idea of what needs to take place over the next three, three months to kind of get a good idea of you know, what are our next steps, um, and go from there. Um, so that's it for me for my chairman's report. Um, treasurer's report, Mike. Yeah, no uh, no spending in the account, in the account the past month, so our balance remains the $11,839.43. Okay. Uh, well, that, that will soon change because I did receive a uh, an invoice um, that is uh, now due with the town of Hampton uh, for our secretarial services. Uh, total amount due for a, a six-month period of time is $488. So I would ask uh, the commission to make a motion uh, to approve payment, and I will give this to Mike uh, for immediate payment to the town of Hampton. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Mr. Rage. Uh, Motion, second by Mr. Griffin. Any further discussion? She's Hearing none. Huh? She's worth all of that. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more. That's what I'm going to retire on. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we're on a fundraiser. Right? Yeah. 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 Hearing uh, no further discussion, all in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Mike, can you uh, yes. make sure that that gets paid? Yep. Yep. Old business. You know, I, I've been waiting all day for the first item on, on old business, and that's the fundraising ideas, because I know that, from what I hear, that the subcommittee has been working very hard with a variety of different ideas. So, I don't know, Mr. Preston, are you uh, the spokesperson for that subcommittee? I am, yeah. There's some really funny ideas, but we're not going to talk about them yet. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. There's a lot of stuff going on now. Uh, every time I turn around, we're asking for money from somebody else. There's a Hampton firefighter, Kyle Jamison, who's down at Sloan Kettering in New York with some very serious illnesses. And a lot of people, if it came down to giving money to us or to Kyle, I'd say, you know, you got to give it to Kyle. You know, I just think it's, that's more important. Uh, there's 10, 12 golf outings that everybody's looking now for players and sponsors and tea stuff. I just think it's not a good time to be asking for money. So while I think we will come up with something that's fun for the Beach Commission, I don't know that it's going to be a real fundraiser. You guys have any other thoughts on that? Well, Chuck Chuck was excused because he couldn't make the meeting, but we had, we had come up with four or five ideas, but it was more on the, you know, trying to make it fun to, to you know, to, I guess not so much a hook, but, um, you know, be it uh, using the conference facility at, um, you know, the, um, where the bandstand is or, or you know, maybe a rooftop uh, outing, you know, inviting reps or something like that or, um, or even scavenger hunt. So, you know, kicked around a bunch of ideas, but, uh, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of, you know, it, it doesn't matter if it's Hampton or any, it's any community that uh, there's, 
you know, there's, a, there's a lot of people that are asking and that type of stuff. So um, we'll kind of, I guess, work it or reconvene it or figure it out and maybe get back to you. Okay. That sounds okay. Okay. Any other comments on that? Hearing none, um, I want to make sure that the uh, Beach Commission is aware that there is a public hearing on April 11th here in this room um, hosted by the uh, Board of Selectmen, um, and it has to do with the Route 1 and 101 interchange along with the Intermodal Center um, that the Rockingham Planning Commission has been working on um, over the last couple of years, uh, trying to move it forward to the, the next step. Um, John, is that during a selectman's meeting? Yes. Or? It is. It's, during, it's the beginning of the selectman's meeting okay. that night. Um, as you know, yeah. as you know that there was a, uh, a number of meetings over the last year or so, and probably even longer than that, to talk about uh, that intersection and also the intermodal. There was a lot of input. A lot of people uh, came and, and provided some ideas and thoughts even to a point of suggesting that it looks better over there than here, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the Rocky and Planning Commission was in a, in a position where they wanted to move uh, it forward, um, and they would like to get it into the uh, New Hampshire DOT 10-year plan. In order for that to happen, um, it would, would require the town of Hampton to support whatever that concept is. Um, as you all know, the RPC came in and made a presentation to the Board of Selectmen thinking that they were probably going to get either an approval or disapproval at that meeting. And what came out of that was the Board of Selectmen decided, and correct me if I'm wrong, Rick, but decided that it would be best to have yet another open discussion, another public meeting, to make sure that the Board of Selectmen gave the residents of, of Hampton an opportunity to voice their opinion, yay and nay, before the Board of Selectmen made a decision on whether or not to support um, this project going forward. One of the things that I think is really important to point out um, is that from the Beach Commission perspective, uh, we, had, we have talked about this ever since I've been on the Beach Commission. If you remember, that it goes way back to even, I think it's 1989, where they were talking about a, uh, um, a, a Walt Disney type of uh, monorail system going from the Route 1, 101 interchange into Hampton Beach. So it's, it's been a topic for, for many, many years. Um, I know from a Beach Commission perspective, and once again, in the master plan, it refers to a off-site parking facility, um, a, an alternative to um, beach parking. So it's it's really has been in our scope to talk about, listen uh, to recommendations and comments. And as you know, uh, if you were there um, at the last sel selectman's meeting, I was sick, but Mr. Preston, Mr. Rage, basically representing different groups and individuals and representing themselves, spoke in favor uh, of the RPC moving forward. Um, since then, it appears that there has been some pushback uh, from individuals here in town, uh, including residents, that uh, would like to have an, uh, a, a say on, on, on this topic. Uh, not necessarily on the interchange itself, but on the intermodal. Um, and so um, I would encourage um, everybody that is available that night to come. Um, I plan to speak, but speak as probably more of an individual than the chairman of the Beach Commission. I will reference that there are aspects of the master plan of the beach that talks about a offsite. Um, but I, I think it's important to see who shows up at this meeting and listen versus talking on what people's reaction will be one way or the other. Um, 
But I think the bottom line, as I mentioned to a, a selectman tonight at another function, that whatever the case might be, um, that people need to realize a couple of things. One, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Watson, but we're probably 10 years away from having something done on Route 1 and 101. So we're still way out. It's not even in the 10-year plan yet. So that's one thing to take into consideration. Because of that, there could be so much more planning and design and getting input from the community um, to help with concerns that people might have about certain things about the project. So there's plenty of time still to provide that input to the RPC. What I would hate to see happen is for the town just to outright say, no, we're not supporting this project, um, and then it'll, it'll be put on the shelf at the RPC office, never to be resurrected again. And I don't think any of us, at least in my opinion, would want to see that happen. So there might be some discussion at this public hearing um, that has to do with can we approve certain aspects of the project, aspect one being the actual roadway uh, change, um, maybe put out on hold, at least at this point, the intermodal component, maybe ask RPC once again to go back and see if there's other locations along 101 that might be more feasible for a park and ride and an intermodal center. But I'm hoping that the Board of Selectmen will at least provide some level of support to RPC moving forward with this project and not to kill it dead in total. Rick? Um, <clears throat> I would like to ask Fran, um, what do you, this has a long history because I've watched it along the way and maybe you could comment on that. On, on the, what about um, like Warren Banbury? Didn't he? Well, that's when when John talked about the uh, Disney World monorail. I think Warren was a big advocate of that. And the guy that was pushing that died eventually because he was an old guy. Uh, some some guy that had designed monorails lived in Northampton. But I, I think you know conceptually the idea is the same. You know, it's functionally how it operates, whether it's on a bus or on a uh, on a monorail. Um, I guess I was hearing two different uh, pieces of it uh, from the, from the selectmen. Uh, one was the location of the intermodal center and whether it's appropriate in that near the center of town. And then the second was uh, with the interchange. Well, that's the state's problem. Let them deal with it. You know, it's you know, 101 is there. Both uh, actually one, not in Hampton, but in. Uh, on, on both sides and and uh, and Seabrook, uh, Hampton Falls and Northampton are, are state highways and um, so the question was whether that intermodal center ought to be out to 95. Um, I think from the beach perspective, it, it would be better at the interchange. I think that's that's an ideal location. It's an, uh, it makes a lot of sense there. Um, Does the planning board have any feeling of that? We haven't taken a strong position one way or another. We haven't really taken that up at all. This project has been kicking around, I'll bet it's five years. So uh, will somebody from the planning board be coming to this meeting that we're having? Sure. Yeah, we, I'll, uh, I'll make sure they get invitation if you'd rather have an invitation. I don't need an invitation. We, ju you, we just got one. Yeah, we just got one. <laughs> I think it will be good. Jason's I'll, I'll make sure that I announce it. Jason's yeah. sitting right here. And Jason, yeah. maybe you can be there. The I thing will. is <laughs> that this is the time when people come, and that's why I suggested that we have some input from the public. If anyone's out there that does want, if they want the ability to... Uh, pick a bus up that will take them to either Manchester or the Logan Airport or whatever. Now's the time for them to do it. Because many times you hear people talk about these things, but you know now's the time. There's been people working on, uh, like Warren, for all the years I've been being selected for the last more than 10 years. Well, part of the question was who, who you're serving. You know, I think to a great extent you're serving... 
Hampton and immediate area re residences, you know, rather than dragging people in from uh, Which was you know, suggested miles and miles the away. I frequently, I, I, I always use the, uh, the lot in uh, Newburyport. I do as well. Uh, That's what we need people to say. There was no one there to say that. I think everyone uses it. But there was a lot of talk about how a lot here in Hampton would only benefit people from other towns. Well, I, don't think I think that's it's going to benefit a lot of people from Hampton, and you know, perhaps uh, certainly, you know, Seabrook and uh, Northampton and, and uh, Hampton Falls, the immediate abutters. But uh, if it's ten years out, it might not. Uh, you know, that's something to think about. We have to be part of that plan. You, you'll, you'll be down in Costa Rica by that. It's not going to help me in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's important yeah. for people to comment. You, you know, the other aspect of it, I, I, I think it, it, it came about in part and continues to, to get focused, is that the parking at the beach keeps going away. And it's you know, over the last five years, We've seen a, a, we at the planning board have seen a whole bunch of what were vacant lots on Ocean Boulevard, on Ashworth, turn into buildings. Well, they were, they were surface parking lots for many, many years. Uh, where the old salt was, that was a surface parking lot. I believe that fire was 1999. I'd sat there for 13 or 14 years vacant. Um, and there, were, there are several other parcels, and they keep disappearing. And, and what that means is that parking is disappearing. Um, so this is an alternative uh, to that. And it, it, it's a planning function, and that's going to continue to happen. And the other side of that, I think, is as we redevelop the beach, we increase the demand to come to the beach. You know, more and more people say, gee, it looks pretty good now. I think we, I think we ought to go there. Um, so. Well, well, to Fran's point about that parking disappearing, you know, while that might hurt the business that's down there now, it's a very good thing for the town of Hampton when these new buildings come in and they're giving the town two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars $250,000 per year in taxes or more. So that's, that actually bodes well for, for, for the whole community. <coughs> I was at that selectman's meeting the other day, and I was I was in early, and I left before uh, one of the selectmen went on went off on us for a whole bunch of things. Um, so I, if we could address just a, a few things, maybe maybe you know the bus companies would prefer to be out closer to 95. You know that's easier for them to hop on and off, and we still benefit the Hampton people, and from not having to get down to um, Newburyport, we can hop park our car further out. But we need parking desperately at the beach, and we are talking 10 years out. We have to look to the future. That's what planning, that's what you people do. But the point I wanted to make that night, which to me was, was the most important thing from, from a DOT point, is, is when you get on and off of 101. If you're coming to the beach from the west side and you want to go north on one, you have to actually come and weave through and, and some people weave through, some people just charge through, and you just have to be careful. You know, that's, that's not as bad as the other side. If you're trying to go west, and, and, and any of us that do that with any kind of frequency, when we approach that, that on-ramp, whether we're getting on or driving through, we're all being very, very careful because we know how bad that can be. It's either you're, if you're coming on, you're afraid you're going to get hit from behind, or if you're coming west on the highway, you're afraid somebody could push you into the other lane because of the way it's situated. So I think for that reason alone, we want to take a look at changing that. And if we can benefit from having a few hundred parking spaces to help Hampton Beach, I think that's a plus. Chuck? Well, I, you know, obviously, we talk Hampton Beach a lot because that's where we're at, and um, but we're all from the town of Hampton. And downtown needs parking as well if there's something going on where people are parking in that area they're going to support the local businesses i mean we've seen in you know the galley hatch and 401 and old salt and all the different places improving their locations and they're going to need more parking um so it's not just the beach we always gear to the beach because we're the beach commission but i i don't think it can hurt the whole town so i mean i think it can help the whole town 
So I, I think you have to look at, at the, the big picture of everybody. And uh, the convenience of that location, uh, it's, it's right there. And 10 years from now, if we think Route 1's bad now, 10 years from now, if we don't do something, it's going to be horrendous. So I think it needs to be changed. Any other comments? I think one one point that we need to comment on <clears throat> is the fact that it is 10 years out. Mm -hmm. I don't even think that was said at the right. meeting. Right. And I think that's very important. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, and, 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 and once again, I think that gives us or gives RPC an opportunity to continue to explore alternatives, uh, but to keep the ball moving. Um, you know, DOT, for example, doesn't want to hear that after all of these years of, of planning by the RPC and, and all of these hearings that people have in the past been supportive of this, all of a sudden have a vote by the Board of Selectmen in Hampton saying, no, we're not in support of this. And, and, and DOT is going to say, well, if, if we can't even get Hampton to support it, then why should we even consider putting it in the 10-year plan? So, and I, I won't ask you, Mr. Watson, to comment on anything. <laughs> I, I had one Bob? comment, if I might. My personal perception is if you move the bus from Portsmouth to Boston out to 95, you're addressing the core arguments that were raised by selectmen against this proposal. As far as the parking, the argument is if CNJ comes into town, most of the parking is going to be consumed by CNJ users who are going to be there either for the whole day or for a week or whatever period of time they choose. So it seems that and it just rationally makes more sense to me where they have the rest of their bus stops right beside the highways that this one be there also. And I don't see any benefit to them driving into town, particularly in the busy season, with those buses. So. Well, I think that what I don't think that was the big part of their problem. Their problem is, I mean, they were using everything was coming out. It was all about the conservation. No, you know that never gets brought up usually. Uh, about uh, how, uh, the police having to uh, patrol the whatever. Um, I, I don't think that that, I just think that they were shooting out at anything, the talk that was going on there. So if there's talk out there that would like to see those things, those are the ones that need to come to the meeting and bring it up at the selectmen's meeting. One thing about buses coming in and out of Boston, I mean, when I first bought the hotel, we had Peter Pan buses. Always. That came to Hampton Beach, and I had a lot of guests from Worcester area, Boston area, that would come up and they would spend their week's vacation in Hampton Beach. They'd come off the bus with their bag and, and, and be able to have their uh, vacation. Now I get calls all the time, how can I get there? Well, <laughs> it's not that easy. You can get to Newburyport, and then you have to take a taxi, and you have to, so it would be, it would be uh, advantageous for people that want to make the trip, older people that don't drive anymore, that don't drive on the highway, or, or, or students that want to come back and forth uh, might help constantly need to be shuttled to Newburyport to, to get to Boston. So uh, it would be very convenient for a lot of people. You used to be able to take the bus right from where the, um, you know, the chamber is and take it to Haverhill. I used to go there when I worked as a kid. I w didn't have a car or whatever. I would go to the movies in Haverhill and stuff like that. And there, were seven, there, were, there used to be, you remember, Bob, they used to drop people off from Boston. Also, just like Chuck said. Okay. okay, so once again, and this is more for the general public, you've heard our conversation tonight with regard to this uh, public hearing, and I would encourage anybody who's watching uh, this meeting tonight um, to um, come up to the, uh, to the town hall on that evening to uh, speak and or listen uh, to this very, very important uh, uh, project. Old business. I just want to comment that uh, the board, uh, the commission, um, did make two motions uh, last meeting, uh, one on the seawall and one on the uh, uh, Article 42 about the uh, blocking of, of streets. And um, I'm happy to say that both of those two warrant articles that we supported uh, also was approved um, by uh, the voters of Hampton. 
new business. Um, we all know that we have Regina Barnes as our new uh, Hampton Select Woman. Um, she is from the beach, and so my thought process would be to invite her to a uh, beach commission meeting, probably at the end of April, and just for her to um, share a little bit of her thoughts about Hampton Beach and her vision, but also to give her an opportunity to get to meet everybody here on this Beach Commission and for us to share with her in high level bullet points, you know, where we're coming from so she has a good understanding, um, you know, uh, of where the Beach Commission is and it's a little bit more of an educational uh, process for her to understand who we are and what we do, but also to get her vision. Um, so if nobody has any objections, I will uh, send out an invite to her to attend our next meeting. Regina is going to be the new beach. She's going to go to the, all the precinct meetings also. Good. So she'll have a, she enjoy, she's going to enjoy it and she's looking forward to working there. Okay. Mike, do you want to talk a little bit about Dread? And I know you yeah. wanted to talk about the spring meeting, but also the parking issue. Yep. Yep. So a couple things. Uh, the first, our, we'll have our community meeting on uh, May 19th at 5 o'clock. We'll start it at 5 o'clock at the Seashell. That's where, you know, our staff will be down um, and invite the public in to, uh, in to talk to us, um, as we've been doing in the spring and fall for the past few years. We feel those meetings have been beneficial for us, um, so we'll be doing that again. You know, we'll have staff there. We'll have updates, you know, projects, things that are going on, and, and then, of course, listening and... And hearing from uh, hearing from people too as well. So, what time yeah, is that? May nineteenth, five o'clock. It's it's before our beach commission meeting that night. So we'll probably go five to six thirty over there for the for the public to come. Yeah, I'll announce it at the select. Right, meetings. thank you. Right, yep. yep. Said five, right? Yeah, five o'clock start. Yep, in the seashell. And what night is that? Uh, it's a Thursday. Thursday night. Yep. Yep. And then secondly, the, uh, as Charlie alluded to, the, uh, so our pay stations, um, as we start, as we get into the season here in parking, we've, normally we've, we've started April 1st in the past. Um, that's when we can start. Uh, this year we're looking to start April 18th, which is two weeks from Monday, uh, mainly because we are upgrade. Actually, our pay stations are going through an upgrade with some improvements in technology um, credit cards, PCI compliance, those things. We're, we're uh, making those improvements. They're scheduled to, uh, we're going to GNC next week for that contract, and then the work will start after that, and we should be up and running by Monday, April 18th for the parking. So right now, again, so from the 1st through the 17th, there'll be, you know, the pay stations will not be in operation. Will you be having any signage? Yeah, yeah, I right. don't have that, yeah. Okay. Yep. They won't even be out of the pay stations. Yeah. Okay. They won't even be functional. Or, yeah, but we will. All right. Any, any yep. discussions for Mike? Hearing none. Um, as um, we have been told uh, recently, and it's been in the newspapers, that the um, New Hampshire Coastal Risk and Hazard Commission has come out with its first draft report, um, preparing New Hampshire for project storm surge, sea level rise, and extreme uh, pre precipitation. Um, I just want to make sure that all the Beach Commission members know that um, you can go online, and I have some copies to review uh, what the, uh, the draft report is indicating. Also, if anybody has any opinion one way or the other, uh, there is a, a public comment period between March 18th and uh, June 30th. Um, the comments can be mailed to directly to the Rocky Hill Planning Commission. And also there will be two public meetings to provide comments in person, one um, on the 26th at the U. Gray Coastal Conservation Center in Greenland, and the second meeting June 1st um, at the uh, Seacoast Science Center uh, up in Rye. Um, I have yet to have an opportunity to sit down and read uh, the commission report, but I would suggest that um, 
members of the commission at least educate themselves on what the uh, the draft report is suggesting and talking about because it does have direct impact on Hampton Beach. Um, one of the things I do not want to uh, suggest, um, and you've already seen a couple of uh, uh, news articles, that um, I think we're way, uh, way far in terms of creating any type of uh, emergency situation <coughs> in uh, addressing this, uh, uh, this report. Um, that um, some have referred, uh, I believe one of the scientists that uh, was on the commission uh, recommended that we stop um, doing what we're doing down in Hampton Beach and start making plans on, um, you know, Hampton Beach going away in, in the next 30 to 40, 50 years. Um, I, I would not want to pass that message out to anybody. Um, I, I, you know, I think Senator Stiles put it uh, the best, and that is that this uh, report is, is made up of recommendations that could help the business community and the residents of Hampton Beach better prepare uh, if there were uh, storms, uh, surges, uh, et cetera, but not to panic and say we need to close down Hampton Beach. So I have um, the information about the, uh, the report. If anybody wants it, I'll leave it here. Um, my only other new business is um, historically the Beach Commission has uh, gone in April um, and made a, uh, uh, a uh, annual report uh, to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, we've kind of waited uh, for April because that's if there's been any changes within the board. Um, and, and what it, what we've been doing in the past is just basically giving a, an annual report to the Board of Selectmen and to be there uh, just in case they had any questions about what our activities have been or what we plan on doing in the pre in the in the year coming so i i plan to get on the uh, board of selectmen's agenda for april uh to do that but i'm also going to suggest uh unless i in a, unless i hear otherwise from this board this commission um to make this a a, a, a two agenda um appointment the first uh, agenda item is to give them uh, our annual review, who, you know, what we've been doing and what we're planning on doing, but also taking the opportunity in front of the Board of Selectmen at that, that meeting to address uh, once and for all the sidewalk uh, on Ocean Boulevard. Um, I think, um, although we're not going for the Tiger Grant um, this year, uh, somewhere down the road, we're going to have to resolve that sidewalk issue on the west end of uh, west side of Ocean Boulevard, uh, because I am sure that DOT uh, or Federal Highway uh, will not even think about giving us any type of federal money if we can't come to an agreement between the town and uh, DOT on the sidewalk issue. And uh, it's my opinion that uh, it's now time for us to go directly to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, we know what the town manager's opinion is. We know what the opinion is of the town uh, general counsel. Um, but um, we feel, I feel, that um, they need to seriously look at um, having the Board of Selectmen, because it's my understanding that the town manager said that he works <coughs> at the will of the Board of Selectmen, and if the Board of Selectmen say, to the town that yes, you will take over the maintenance of those sidewalks. Um, then it's uh, it's a board of selectmen decision, not a town manager's decision. So um, I plan to put it on the table. Uh, I think that the uh, the five members of the board of selectmen um, um, are individuals that have um, um, uh, an interest in seeing Hampton Beach move forward. Uh, have an interest in seeing Ocean Boulevard being improved. And, uh, and I think that if we can come up with some types of concessions by both the town and by DOT, um, that we, um, we should be able to uh, at least put it on the table for the Board of Selectmen to make a decision uh, on, on that topic so we can put this to bed once and for all. Uh, comment on that, anybody? 
strongly support it. Okay. It's, it's necessary. You go up and down that boulevard now, it's a disgrace. And it's actually dangerous, you know, for people. There's people falling all the time on that boulevard, yeah. on those sidewalks. <clears throat> yeah. And, you know, it was mentioned at some point that uh, the town didn't want the responsibility of shoveling or plowing or something the uh, west side of the road. You know, that's not where people walk anyway. The people walk on the sunny side of the road all winter, and, and State Parks has been um, very accommodating in helping to keep that sidewalk clear. Uh, last year, I watched them go by in my condo. There was four feet of snow, and they had a, a snow plow putting the snow out on the beach. You know, it might not have been as quick as, you know, some people would like, but they did it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, think, uh, I think we could figure it out. Are you allowed to put the snow on the beach? Wow. <laughs> well, that's one of the problems. They, yeah. they always try to act like that that's not at all possible to do. Well, try to put it on Bill's road, see what happens to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so I will let you know when that appointment has been scheduled with the town. And once again, any of uh, the commissioners are more than welcome to um, sit with me on, on, on that one. So Definitely. Um, anybody else have any new business. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion made by Mr. Hausman, second by uh, Mr. Ladd. All in, all in, all in favor? <laughs> okay. Thank you. And, oh, uh, one other thing before we adjourn. Yes. Thank you, Anthony.